really is a technique. So let's see if the car has No, nope, it's not. It's not done yet. <laughs> A quick way to ruin the mold is to demold it before it is ready. But as I don't really care about this one, we, we might as well demold it a little bit. The good thing when you do it like Legos like this is you can just remove it a bit at a time, and you won't ruin it as badly as if you removed everything at once. And here we have the basic car mold. Uh, if you're wondering what this is, it's basically it has a plastic clear glass screen inside, and because of the heat, it has condensed. So that's nothing to worry about. And then if you're wondering about this tail thing, whatever they are called, that won't be a problem either to cast. And uh, I should have used a bit more more instant mold I see because there's a bit of a bump on top of it and there's a little bit of flashing on this side but it, it doesn't matter and all you have to do is pop it out oh it's some kind of transformer or something maybe one of those kinder surprises <laughs> oh I see there was a slight problem Basically, I did not know you could take this car apart, so when I pushed on it hard, it, it apparently came apart, and it leaked inside it, and the problem I received there was that there's a tear in the mold, basically because it wasn't thick enough, but I, I can still use this. It won't be as perfect as basically the, the car when it was inside ended up the mold ended up something like this and yeah eh, I can make a I can make a copy of the front at least that's, that's all that, that matters as long as you can see the results of what I'm trying to show you it's all fairly easy and then the only thing left to show you is how to make a two part mold for this this thing when when you make a mold i've seen a lot of people trying to make molds of uh, melta guns and things like that and what you need to ask yourself is uh, do i need to create a two part mold can it be done in a one part mold basically This here is a Storm Raven plasma cannon, and with this piece, for instance, you wouldn't need to make a two-part mold. Then again, it's perfect because it comes in two parts, and if you wanted to do it that way, you could just do it on top, no problems. But with this, as the shape is pretty perfect, you could just put it like this. And have then, if you use this as an example, just make a mold like this, and then you just push the green stuff down into it. And then, when it hardens, you just bend it a little bit and grab it and pull it out. 
So for this, there's no need for a two-part mold. The only time you need a two-part mold is when there are very complicated pieces. Uh, if you take this, for instance, there's no way you could do this with you could do this with a one-part mold, simply because of the gaps between everything and it, it just wouldn't work. So for this you would need to make a top and a bottom mold. Then again these are so cheap that the green stuff is actually more expensive <laughs> than the pieces to get. So <coughs> let's complete this mold. Since this has now hardened, all you have to do is put it back in the box. And it should fit in pretty perfectly. Then you just take a small piece of instant mold and put it on top, grab your pushing piece, put it down and push. Since uh, hot instant mold doesn't stick to cold, you now, ha now have a pretty much perfect two-part mold. If you want to fix it after that, to some people use pins and, thing and things, so it the mold doesn't slide. You, ca you can do that by drilling holes in it and putting basically pins in it. I have like this set of P3 1.25 millimeter rods. If you wanted to, you could drill holes and then just stick the pins through it, and then you have a mold that's pretty rig rigid. I wouldn't suggest just taking the pins and pushing it through without drilling a hole. You can do that, but uh, the problem is that. Uh, it will push the mold a little bit. It will create tension on some parts. It, it might distort your mini, especially when you do like I do and have only, I try to save as much as I can and have only small gaps in between where the mold ends and, and begins. So if I were to push a rod through this side here, it would buckle the side. So I suggest drilling first and then, unless you make a really really big one, but then you will most likely won't need to make a pinning either. Or another technique you could use is for one part of your mold, you first, and this is 4x4, four four, uh, and for the next one you could make it five by five. That way you have a mold you can stick into another mold. That could work as well. As for the different putties you can use, I've, I only have access to a few things that I've been trying out. The regular green stuff as you can see, I've been <laughs> I haven't been you're supposed to use 50 50, but I haven't been doing that. I've been trying to do it, but yeah basically, you can put different amounts of hardener and resin and get a putty that is that will cure either harder or more softer. I, I just tried to stick 50 50 because I've had no problems with that. This is the Gale Force 9 green stuff. I also bought some of these. Milliput white and milliput yellow and grey. As for for colors, here we have milliput white and here we have milliput grey. I really don't like this putty. At least, well, there's no problems with it. It 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 cures 
really really hard it this is it's like rock rock hard but I I don't know I guess if I apply too much press pressure to this this it it will break but it it cures hard as rock the problem I don't know if it I maybe have might have a bad putty or something but when you mix this together it's pretty much like clay it looks like clay and it performs like clay basically on green stuff I'd say green stuff is more of a rubber rubbery when you put water on green stuff it all it does it does it just doesn't stick to you but when you put water on on millipot it becomes really well it acts just like clay if you have ever worked with clay and put clay in water it becomes really slippery and I don't know if it absorbs the water or whatever it does but <sighs> yeah, I, I just don't don't like this putty at least not for instant mold because since it's just like clay you will get milliput all over your fingers and your working area and everything and the problem is when you put it in instant mold is that it will leave a short or a thin layer of milliput on top of it and the problem with that is if I were to use milliput in this one and then just uh, pop it in water and try and to reuse it the milliput layer would still be on it and that would mean it that it would lose its non-stick ability on small parts here and there as you try to reuse it so if you use milliput you have to wash your instant mold before reusing or, or else you will end up with problems with milliput being inside your next mold otherwise milliput is it's good but I, I'm gonna use plastic gloves from now on when working with it because I really don't want to get that stuff all over you. Another problem I have with Milliput, I, I, I think it was uh, the, the Milliput Super Fine White. Here we have the white part and here we have another white part. So two white parts you mix together. How are you supposed to know when you mix them thoroughly? They're both white. So <sighs> yeah. And basically <laughs> this stuff is just well it's not like green stuff at least. It's I like green stuff a lot better, but that's that's just me. You can use whatever kind of putty you like, whatever your favorite might be. I've also tried Procreate, and Procreate is pretty much the same thing as uh, uh, green stuff. It works the same way, it just has different colors. One of the colors was uh, black, and the other one was uh, white, I think. I have no problems whatsoever with Milliput uh, or uh, Procreate. I don't know if I have some. some I, kn I know I've I did something with it, but I don't know where it is. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I created this. This is uh, Procreate. It hardens into this grey lump. Oh look! 